So here, here, let's bring in Gavin Andrew again from Western High School. A sophomore, I think he catches. Yeah, it's a good swing. I, I I like what I see there. I I don't I didn't I can't see the pitch from the side angle, but it's yeah. Uh, I got I'm, you, you know what it is over at Pines Charter. I kind of yeah, lock sure, in sure. at the plate. You right, know, it's right. kind of hard unless you're right behind. Mm -hmm. But I, what I liked here, Holly, before I, you get breaking into it, knows there's a guy on third. I thought he had a good, you know, he had a nice tight swing and just did what the job took was put the ball in play, get the run, and he happened to find left field with the ground ball to left. Yeah, and I like the balance. I mean, there's a lot of good things going on here with this young man's approach. I mean, the one thing that you see right away is that he's got loose hands, which I like to see. Um, you know, that's always key. It doesn't always have to present itself in a you know a bat that's waggling back, you know, wagging back and forth. Uh, but you you like to see explain those loose, loose hands, hands Holly. Well, explain loose hands. loose hands. You kind of see it in him. He's you know he's wiggling the bat just a little bit, but the, there there isn't a great deal of tension. You don't see the tension. He looks very relaxed. He looks like he's very comfortable on the box. He's Correct. not you know trying to even his step to the you know his step with his lead leg hits the ground softly. Like we always used to talk about stepping on the egg, right? You step too hard, you know you're creating tension in your body, and when you create tension in your body, everything seems to just kind of want to tighten up and just kind of gets off you know off kilter, so to speak. Um, it, it really is good. I, I, I like what I see there. He's got the loose hands. I, you know, I wouldn't always present that way. You know, I was very still, so I kind of kept my hands in here, but even though I had those loose fingers and those loose hands, you couldn't always see it that way, but I identify it very easily in his swing. You could demonstrate <laughs> again, Holly, I think the view is a little well, bit. I just kind of like, you know, I was a very still, a lot of times I, I loved, you know, I leg for me, I was a big leg loader. So I wanted to get my weight back. So in my mind, when I got in the box, I was a little bit more still up here but I always wanted to load with my leg and get my weight on my backside. And that's how I would always remind myself to do it. But still, I was trying to maintain what that young man has, which are those loose hands, that, that idea that I'm going to be quick and not be um, so strong in the grip. You don't want to, you know, uh, Reggie Smith used to tell me all the time, Holly, when I was a young hitter, you look like you're, you, you, you know, you're working that bat over so much that you're, you know, you're going to turn it into sawdust. Like you were holding it too tight. <laughs> And, and I, and I understood it when I got there, because to me, you know, it was like, okay, I'm strong, you know, and I'm going to get in there and I'm going to swing hard and do all these other things. And in fact, what you really want is just the opposite of that. You want is, is little tension in your body as you can get to is because you don't want to be tight because tightness generally creates uh, a hard step. It, it, it gets you off kilter, gets your swing off path. It does a lot of things that don't really benefit you. And so the idea is as a hitter, you want to stay loose and relaxed. You see with a lot of major league hitters, and it's it's a way that they kind of let, you know, you hear guys talk about it, in with the good, out with the bad, right? You'll see their breathing. And that's that's very key to a lot of this. And, and you know, you take that deep breath in, you kind of let it out, and then next thing you know, your body relaxes, right? That's what you're searching for. Because when you get into the, you, you get into the box and you're facing a guy that's throwing hard, you know, you get in there, you know, the tension wants to come, and you kind of have to fight it sometimes. But what I see with this young man is good. Look, you see the nice load to the backside. He finishes through. He's got a strong front side as well, at least in terms of getting that leg straight and keeping the weight behind his front side. He does uh, technically. I mean, this is a really, really good swing. Of course, I don't know the pitch, but you look at everything as his weight transitions. Right he does, there. His belt buckle doesn't push forward. He finishes at the pitcher. You see where he's stepping. He's stepping back at the mound, so that's a good step there. Everything about his swing, you know, the bat's wrapped just a little bit. Uh, around his head, which, you know, maybe you can tinker with that over the course of time, but it's not a, you know, th th there's nothing like, you know, you got a life altering change, you know, change your swing here. It's, it's really simple. You know, he's got a nice quick approach to the baseball. And, and what I love to see is that this young man's getting a base hit and he's, and he's playing the game. And that's the key. I, I say this all the time, Joe, you've heard, you've heard me say it so many times. I'm yeah. hoping that you don't tune me out right now when I say it again, because <laughs> I'm going to say it again. And, and, it, and it's so repetitive especially with young hitters. Guys, teach yourself how to hit. Teach yourself how to be a 300 hitter, a 400 hitter, and then let's worry about the power. Let's worry about, okay, I can add a little bit now. Let's get the ball over the fence. But until you learn how to approach pitchers, put together a game plan, and execute consistently and be a great hitter, you're going to hitting the ball over the fence should be the last thing that you should be thinking about because you're looking for results consistently. And when you start to get the results consistently in high school, then you start to work on the power. The power does not come first. It can't. It's not possible. It's through process that we learn how much power we have and how to tap into that power. 
but we have to take the baby steps first, which is be a great hitter before we learn anything about how far we can hit a baseball. 